So the question is, why doesn't he grow up? Why does he still behave as a child? How can we help him get rid of these leftovers from childish behavior? <laughs> Those motherfuckers in their pointy shoes are going at it. <laughs> Welcome to Meathead on Mushrooms. Yeah. Here we are to save the day. Yeah. Hey, Kyle. Can you imagine if we started the show like that? Why don't we? Because everybody else does. I mean, watch the Today Show. Watch Good Morning America. I think we should have a dance. What kind of a dance? Well, you can't say it without <laughs> giving us a demo. What kind of dance? A crump. It should be like should be interpretive crump. It should be one of those new like 13-year-old YouTube dances. Is that called like twerking? No, I think that one's old now. Oh, I think it? twerking's a way of. Is that guy. already old? Yeah. Plus, that's only for for girls. You, like, you, you do you do you really want guys twerking? Do I guys got, twerk? I got cakes. You, I got, <laughs> what, what does that mean? I don't know. Isn't that what young people say? <laughs> so, how about twerking? Is uh, it's a pretty, it's a it's a common thing, right? Yeah. And just, apparently, just it's about, always existed though, just in different. Names. I think it's been about twelve years. Since the thong song, <laughs> like the thong song was well, the most right. provocative thing yeah. ever. Yeah. I was thinking about this from the last time I was here. We yeah. were at the elevator talking about this. I was 18. Mm. Thong song came out. It was madness. There was a song <laughs> about underwear. Yeah. Like that was a big deal. <laughs> like we tend to, you know, we're always like thinking about like leave it to beaver days. Like, yeah. oh, black and white TV, Lassie and stuff. No, no, no. 10 years ago. It was a big deal that Cisco did a song about underwear. A mainstream song. And now we have high school girls twerking. No big deal. Mm-mm. I mean, I feel like if I if I was a dad right now and I had a daughter and I found out that she was recording herself twerking, I'd be like, well, that just is the culture. It'd like, be, that's just a, what's going on. It'd be a so subtle side. I wouldn't be happy. Yeah, I would kind of be just, like, oh, it would just be where like, did I go wrong? Fuck. Because <laughs> you can't stop it. Like I saw it coming. You can. Mm, but, but I don't know. I don't know, man. I but mean, what could you do about it? It would be one thing if she had like a YouTube channel dedicated to twerking. Then I'd be a bit more upset. Like that, then she's like committed to it. Like oh, that's not okay. That's but if she was like, experimenting with her, friends, like it's a possible profession for her. Yeah, like she's she's getting money from advertising with YouTube because she's really good at shaking her ass. That I'd be upset. Uh, if you, it was a. If it was what a I'm like, I'm glad you're monetizing this, but why did you choose this? Before? So if she was terrible at it, got like no views, you'd be cool. I don't. I, well, I don't want it on the internet. That's okay. what I'm saying. <laughs> like if she had an outlet to share this with hundreds of pervs, I'd be kind of upset. Yeah, that's not cool. Do you think you're gonna have kids? I, cor- I my like my knee jerk reaction is like, oh no, because blah blah blah. But I'm sure I'll mess up somewhere. I'm definitely not on. having kids. Myself. I don't want. The thing is, I know I'm too selfish. <laughs> have kids like i love kids i love hanging out with kids i'm really good with them i just don't being a parent scares me and if that's the case there's no reason to bring a life into this world there's plenty of kids around there i don't need to make one are you having kids mm-hmm. kyle's gonna yeah. breed oh yeah are kyle. you having kids now no but what do you think 10 years but soon i would say I'd how say old's your girl five years Fuck. within how old's your girl she's younger uh 26 oh. um yeah, you. The, the, I think the right answer to the question of you having kids mm. is you have no fucking idea. Yeah, the, the, your answer is right because you're 21 and you're way too selfish to have kids. And yep. You shouldn't have kids right now. Mm-mm. Like that would be the dumbest thing ever. But <laughs> at, really you're, you're planning but for the you, mistake. <laughs> but you at 31 is going to be a different guy. Totally. So well, we were just talking about you, the experiences. You trying to make decisions for your future self is so irrelevant. It's it doesn't matter. I have no um basis or foundational no. information to go it's off. a silly question yeah you know i'm mean, the other I mean? way when i was 20 and 21 i wanted kids i i knew that was happening now i'm 30 and i'm definitely not do you think kids. that was a hispanic thing that's interesting yeah. it's definitely so hispanic what, thing, right what? I, I i drifted away from the spanish what changed your family. mind uh life um just seeing 
seeing, you know, I never knew my biological father. I was raised by um, my stepdad, Mm -hmm. who I call dad. And if, like, me, him, and my brother are all in the same room, you'll see, like, we all have the same mannerisms. Yeah. So people actually do mistake us for being actual family, even though they're French and Irish and I'm Dominican. We, I mean, that is your actual family. Yeah, yeah he like, is your, absolutely. I, the whole, the whole, yeah. Just because you aren't biologically right. related, we're right. all biologically related at yeah. some point <laughs> yes. anyway. Yeah. Like, why, why are we holding on to the past? We're still yo? made of right. the same shit. Like, I mean, if if we treat each other, we are what we treat each other. You know, if we treat each other like family, we're family. Yeah. But like in in my family, like <clears throat> the guys have multiple kids with multiple girls, and then <sighs> I actually did an ancestry dot com with my girl, and she was able. She's Irish, and she was able to date her shit back to like the fifteen hundreds. Whoa! I don't. I never met my biological father. I only know his name. I know nothing else. Mm. And then I asked my mother, you know, about our grandfather and my grandmother. And it turns out my grandmother had uh, five kids with three different guys. And my great grandfather is like unknown. Like they only have like one name for him. <laughs> like they have a name for him. Like, yeah, like they have they one call like, him like Voldemort. Something. Yeah, they, they gave me they gave me like one name. And I tried to look it up, but I couldn't find anything. And it was like, all right, so kind of good. I don't really want kids because this, this, I kind of feel like ending this DNA line here. <laughs> I was thinking about my kids, would you asking about where they're from and their genealogy and things like that. I mean, not being able to give them an answer. I don't like it. I, I would imagine my child probably wouldn't like it either. I feel you. I'm one of seven and we mm. all have different dads, except for my twin sister. So like that whole that's a that's just a, a mess, like just a giant mess. My mom just went crazy. Have you ever tried Ancestry dot com? Yeah, uh, it's impossible with my dad's side because just can't do it. Because well, one they're Puerto Rican, right? Yeah. If you're Puerto Rican, that means you're also black, <coughs> you're Spanish, and you're Taino Indian. Right. It's a, you can't trace it. It's over. You could trace the last name, like my last name is Pagan, so you could trace that, and that goes back to Spain. But I'm not really from Spain. Yeah. Like look at me, I'm not fucking white you, you, <laughs> and, I, you and i See, both that, have more i am and I, that's a misconception too is that like the way you look is tells you what you mostly right. are that's not no. always true either well it's like, not yeah i I'm could also... you know that white guys all the time will do that uh uh but white guys always look the same yeah well, <laughs> what's the 23 and me they'll do 23 and me mm. and find out that the majority of them is black that like just, they don't they don't look black yeah. at all but like more than any other particular uh, ancestry is African. Yeah, that's. I mean, it you makes know, sense. So I mean, I'm that exists. Half my family is Irish and Italian. Yeah, I, I look nothing like my mom. But you know, you would never guess that. Just yeah, like there's just dominant. There's dominant traits. So, Adam, do you ever get mistaken for being of Middle Eastern? Descent? All the time. Me so, too. When I grow out my facial hair, it's all the time. I think him and you and I both have like Moorish descent you know the moors yeah they the it's definitely Islamic, possible my Islamic family people that were in spain and like morocco well, i did <laughs> is that yeah, yeah. No. i actually get right, mis- right? i get i get mistaken for moroccan sometimes yeah and i used to i used to drive a crown vic and i used to always, <laughs> i didn't if help. i if that i let didn't help. if i let this happen <laughs> i would get in the middle of the night coming from the studio like, what's up man i was like yo can i get a ride <laughs> like i'm not a taxi bro <laughs> it's like no dude fucking <laughs> <laughs> what so, yeah. I want to know about last night. What happened? Oh, my God. Tell me about... You fucked up. You, should, you didn't fuck up. You were right for not tell coming me, out because... Tell me why. So, we, we, we were just doing what we were supposed to do, was just drink. And we were at this bar called Nassau Bar downtown. And um, the servers there wear less than normal clothing. It was just a nice bar to be at for a while. Wait, was it a titty bar? No. Was, was this a strip club? No, I've actually never been to... <clears throat> A, um, I've never been to a strip club, but this is just a bar with bartenders and just happen to be hot. They're just in bikinis. And they don't wear a lot of clothes. They're in just bikinis. That's just bikinis. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So that's really? what we're doing. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Can we go there tonight? Yes, we can. Um, so, you gonna bring your girl? She's, she's out, out of town. She's <laughs> 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 like we're there. She's we're out of town uh, with the sinister we, smile. We were gonna, yeah. we're gonna you go know, look like, and not yeah, touch I and love, smile. <laughs> nah, it's like I I talk so much shit. Like I was so happy being home last yeah. night. Just being home. <laughs> just like yeah, video games. And just one night. Yeah. <laughs> it, I, not having to explain why I didn't make a dentist appointment. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. it was just. I was so happy. Like just to have one break. Because I love Mrs. Meathead. <laughs> I love her. He really does. But He's not. It, 
like sometimes you just want to break <laughs> from those things that you put up with because like i think everybody has this misconception that you meet the perfect person mm. and that they're perfect right they are not there that doesn't exist nope that was a lie that they told you as a kid mm. that's not a real thing the connection it's, might it's be an perfect, easy sell that's why it's an easy sell the people but themselves are not. but you know when you're mm. a kid you could go up your whole life really expecting that mm-hmm. like really expecting well this person's supposed to be perfect and if they're not mm-hmm. perfect we should probably break up well, and like on. it's just not true like the uh, the reality is i mostly you, you just have to like them more than not like really mm-hmm. you have to you would have to you have to rather be with them <laughs> like the more than more. than not more Agreed. than 51% of the, or 51% of the time Agreed. or more. Agreed. And as long as you're over that level, then you you just accept like yeah. the the stuff that's kind of annoying. I mean, because there's so many things about me that annoy her too, right. but just not enough. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know? How, well, How long think, have you and Mrs. Mead had been together? 4 years. 4 years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it there's whole industries that reinforce that idea too of just right. the perfection yeah. and they have to be perfect. Like let's like for the diamond industry for example, like there are reserves in Sweden for all places for whatever of diamonds. Like there's so many diamonds that they have dug out that if they were to release them all now, diamonds would be worth cents, like nothing. Right? right. They'd be chumped. It'd be, it's because it's Cause a they rock. Have them all. But you know, if you release them slowly and you tell women that if he doesn't buy you a diamond, he truly doesn't love you, like this shiny fucking thing that came out of co- like rock, mud. Yeah. He doesn't love you if he doesn't give you this sparkling thing. Yeah. Girls really like. I had a debate with especially like religious girls for whatever reason. If he, if he doesn't get you a dime, he doesn't love you. There's no commitment. Right. I was like, what about the whole love thing? The fact that he's with you. That's not. That's not the that's commitment. Not, that's that's not, not what you're after. <laughs> it's the rock. Like you right. want. I was like, what? I, was, I then I opposed. It's crazy. I was like, what if a guy goes out and he and he chops down a tree, right? He chops down a tree and he takes the wood and he makes the wood into a ring form and he, he gets his own ore, a copper or something simple, and puts embedded it in and made this. He made this beautiful wooden ring with like like it's beautiful right it's this handmade thing what if he got you that like instead of a diamond ring how would you feel and they'd be like oh it's that's ridiculous that's dumb he just he doesn't it's lazy they almost they said it was lazy lazy <laughs> yeah they're like he didn't want to go out and spend the money so there's no commitment it's like what so this is the thing that people who are these girls that you are talking to and interacting with college girls girls from my 21 year old used to no one of them was like 28 it was bananas oh, I, every, I learned not all of them grow out of it yeah, yeah. But learned, the point is that shit's ahead. reinforced and ridiculous yeah, I learned from my girl that it used to be the case that we didn't give diamond rings out. No, as as it was actually a marketing ploy from De Beers. They're the oh, ones yeah. who who made the diamond ring essential for the engagement. Mm-hmm. It actually used to be just other gemstones and things. Yeah, of like that a nature. regular ring, emeralds, rubies, you know, green sapphires. emeralds are popular in Ireland. Yeah, I actually got my girl a, a green <clears throat> emerald ring, and like she's like, I love it. It's Is it because she's Irish? You got that? No, just because that stone is popular. Beautiful. There. Oh, okay. Right on. <laughs> she likes emeralds. <laughs> I am not looking forward to wearing a ring, though. That is, uh, so don't. it's a nuisance. Get a and it's not. And and here's the thing, Mel. I told Mel this, and she really thinks that uh, that it's because, like, I think that other girls won't hit on me, mm-hmm. or she thinks that it's just. I don't want to wear it because it's an obvious, oh, he's married thing. It'll be a deterrent. It has nothing to do with that at all. I would wear a fucking sign on my face. I don't give a shit. <laughs> as long as it, it has didn't to do. disrupt your day, yeah, which is has, what a ring will do. It has do. to do with it's a fucking thing on my finger that I don't want to wear. Like, I don't yeah. want to... I don't want to have that on me all the time. That's an intimate thing. Like, you don't wear rings now. That's like wear. Yeah, I don't wear this rings now. I'm not. I don't like. I don't have no. I don't have a draw to start wearing <laughs> rings. Jewelry. I'm not. I don't look. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not I'm trying like, to be. Mm, I want to get into wearing rings. Watch a year. From have now. you considered oh, well, like coming uh, with like Cuban links? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I pitched the idea of getting a tattoo. So have I. That'd be cool. Cause I like that I'm better. Cool with that. Yeah. That'd be that'd be cool. What about like a necklace and just the ring on it? Uh, the tattoo yeah. ring or lame is it like a tattoo lame. necklace with a ring? yes <laughs> okay no <laughs> i pitched the the tattoo thing too. yeah i don't mind it because it, it, what it, did your real, girl think about it she didn't she didn't want to do that no, my wants, girl didn't want to do it either. it's like i'm an ornament the thing is i don't have to get my girl a, a, a ring at all yeah um and but Does i was she like not want to get married either nope Whoa. no kids no marriage that's amazing yeah. wait well, well that's like a unicorn 
We too. Yeah, she is a unicorn. We yeah. too. That's what I call her. Yeah. My White uncle, girl, big booty. <laughs> Michael keeps saying, as soon as Sorry, girls babe. hit like 38 or 40, whatever, because he's in his 40s. Yeah. There's this biological thing where they want to have kids. <laughs> yeah. Like, like it's a really? scare. That's why my uncle, <clears throat> it, took, it took him forever to get into a committed relationship. You've you known him for a while. He was single for most of How them. old did you say? He's in his 40s. No, no, the, the age that you said. He said between like 38 and 40, girls just want to have kids. Really? And for the longest time, he was single forever because he, he didn't want kids. And all the girls that he would date are on his age, and they all wanted kids. Right. Like a last ditch effort. <laughs> he had, I think he ended like three relationships because they're like, man, I want kids now. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of bananas. Dude, it's a, it's a big change. You guys ever play The Sims? No. Yeah, barely. I don't okay. play Not committed. So, like in the game, you, you go through different age levels, right? You're like a kid, teenager, adult, old person. And. Like, you can do certain things when you're a kid that you can't do with, when you're an adult, and you can do certain things when you're an adult that you can't do when you're, when you're a kid. Like, when you have a kid, when you have that, you, there, you can't go back. You know? You'll never experience certain things again. Certain, right. The feeling of not having another person's life depending on you at mm. all times. You, uh, you won't know what that's like ever again. <laughs> Like the forever, uh, you can't go back. You can't undo it. That's so terrifying. But <laughs> it's so terrifying. But, right, you're giving away that you're like that Freedom. whole part of your life There's is gone. There's so much I have. But done. like that's not <laughs> that's not any different than like actually being a kid and realizing like you remember what it felt like not to have to worry about anything financial. It was amazing. Right. You know what I mean. You yeah. didn't have to worry about rent. Any, w- didn't have to worry about like buying groceries, paying bills, having just a job. School. You just had to live. <laughs> You know, and even before Sports. school, you just had to live. Like your job was just to live, <laughs> right? That's it. I mean, like, but <laughs> you had to up. give you had to give that up, you know. And it opened up the doors for a lot of other cool things. And I think for me, I'm what I'm seeing is like, okay, I'm starting. I'm kind of at the tail end of the number of experiences you can have before kids. It's almost like life is getting a little bit like. I've kind of done most of the stuff I wanted to do yeah. in this time. And there's only so many times you can do that before you're like, all right, what's the next thing? Bring it on. What's the next thing? And like having kids is, I know will usher in a whole new, a whole new thing, a whole, you know, <laughs> ch- new challenges. Cause like, I always need something. I, I need to be, have a hobby. I need to, to get into things, you know, like I, I, I can't help it. And, and now Oddly enough, for the first time, because I used to think like you, mm. that I, like I'm getting bored and I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm seeing my friends have kids and I'm like, oh, like that's what happens. Like I'm, I'm starting to feel like, okay, I could, I can see myself wanting kids. I can see the draw. Damn. You know, let's, let's go to the next chapter. Let's take this up a notch. Dude, it's literally programming a human for forever. 100%. Yeah. I don't think enough people like they don't look at it like put that. enough effort they into don't. it. No, they don't. People they don't really raise don't, their huh? kids anymore, yeah. man. That's one thing uh, me and my girl talk about. It's like we're kind of depriving the world of our child. Yeah, <laughs> just because like we would probably have a really kick-ass kid. It seems as though the people who would be the best parents are also the same people who just do not want to make right. humans because they realize their responsibility. That's true, right? They're smart. They're they're really, just putting them out in the world and in wow. this world, yeah. too. And you, yeah, it, they realized all like it's gonna. It's a lot of fucking work. It's maybe the hardest thing you could ever do. I would say mm-hmm. it's to raise a proper human. But it's also got to be like one of the most rewarding things. If you ever. do it right, right. If you do it right. If you do it right. Imagine mm-hmm. your kid grows up and he's a serial killer. Yeah, he's what that feeling must bad. be like. Yikes! Fuck, what did I do? Damn. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Killed. Why did he? Why did he kill that dog? Ugh. I don't. I don't <laughs> even like. I don't like thinking about this. Yeah, that would be the worst. Like, like he's kid, twelve, and you can tell he's can becoming. A, would you just teach him to do like Dexter style serial or murder? Or kids you, can like, be really scary. Would you just though? be like, all right, this kid's gonna murder people? So it's let me just go teach out in the him woods. how to murder bad people. Oh, that! I, I <laughs> yeah. was just thinking about like, like, did you ever watch Dexter? I, yeah, I, I went I somewhere never else seen with Dexter, it. So I did not know where you were. It's going basically with what that. he just said. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the whole premise, right? Like the broken kid. The dad that's realizes. What it's about. Yeah, the dad realizes at a very young age. The dad's a cop, and he realizes that his adopted kid is just killing animals. Really fucking shit up, and he's fucking crazy. Well, he's not crazy. He's normal. He just kills stuff 
And he's starting to realize, like, this kid's going to be a serial killer. He has an innate need to, like, murder things. Right. So I'm going to just teach him how to kill bad people. Yep. So Forensically. It, that's why the show's, like, the serial killer, the, the friendly neighborhood ser- serial killer. Because... You like him. He's, he's killing gonna, bad people. He's not going to hurt you. He's yeah. no. He's, he's, he's going to hurt the guy. That's he's going to kill hurt you. the yeah. pedophile in right. the neighborhood. Okay. You know, he's he's. He, it's he almost finds, like a necessary evil. Yeah, yeah. Do you think people, it was a good show? Do you think back in the day people like saw that? Like, I'm sure there are times where kids kids were just some kids might just be broken. They come out, they're, <laughs> right. they're fucking shit up. <laughs> yeah, man. They're nature hurt, versus nurture. animals, right? Do you think people just like back in the day just like. Of course. Took them like a long walk in the woods and just came back by themselves. Yeah, dude. I, I was listening. To kill a mockingbird you know, type shit. You know Sam Harris? Yes. I was watching this video. Who's Sam uh, Harris? He's a famous atheist philosopher. Oh. And he was talking about how the... You know what? Can we pull it up? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look up Sam Harris case for atheism. Remind me to... Uh... So... Remind me, what? I was just saying, remind me to tell you the rest of that story because it gets crazy. It's really good, but it, it, it like the idea of being broken. A T H E I S T. Google will fix it. Maybe like yeah. And then uh, go to videos. Yay, internet! But yeah. Um, what is, um, it, what is this video describing? Hold on. I'm going to look it up. Okay. I'm going to find this thing. It's my, it's my YouTube history. Okay. But he, he basically makes this case about how our bodies are fucking machines. Mm. You know, you can pull, a, pull them apart. You can pick out memories. You can change who you are. You could break somebody or, re- or fix them. We're all just like a... a Biological? Yeah, we're, I think it's that. Third one down. Wait, no, it's not. Here, hold on. It's called Sam Harris Neuroscience versus Afterlife. Okay. It's only, yeah, it's a minute and a half. Perfect. Sam Harris Neuroscience versus Afterlife. Um, but he makes like the, the perfect case. Like we, we think that there's this like extraterrestrial part of us that like if you, you part of our brain breaks, there's actually a pure part of us that like survives, but just can't express itself. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's that idea that like, Oh, we were born like a soul. We're yeah, a soul yeah. Yeah. inside a body. And like without the body, we're just, we're the same. <laughs> like, yeah, who, who was like it? what? Who, who was it? it was a, uh... None was, of that makes sense. I think it was Socrates that said the body is just a prison, or uh, the the it's, the mind is is the, is the charioteer controlling the wild horses that is the body. So he was separating, separating mind and body. Sorry, right. no, no audio today. Uh, appar- that, that's okay. I apparently we'll can't. I can't be a guest and and <laughs> this engineer. Is that's okay. Oh, whatever. No, um, like no audio. Oh, so it doesn't play <laughs> it's <not even> at <laughs> all. <laughs> It'll play, but you won't hear anything Here, from I'm anywhere. Gonna, I'm gonna do this then. We're gonna do this. I'm just gonna play it over. Damn it. I'm gonna do it right here. Science is not, in in principle, committed to the idea that there's no afterlife, or that the the mind is identical to the brain, right. or that materialism is true. Science is completely open to whatever, in fact, is true. And if it's true that the consciousness is being run like software on the brain and can by virtue of ectoplasm or something else we don't understand can be dissociated from the brain at death, that would be part of our growing scientific understanding of the world if we could discover it. Now, uh, and there's, there are ways we could in fact discover that if it were true. The problem is there are very good reasons to think it's not true. And we know this from now 150 years of neurology where you damage areas of the brain and faculties are lost. And they're clearly, it's not that everyone with brain damage is has their soul perfectly intact, they just can't get the words out. This is the, you, everything about your mind can be damaged by damaging the brain. You can cease to recognize faces, you can cease to know the names of animals, but you still know the names of tools. I mean, the, 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 the fragmentation in, in, in the way in which our, our mind is parcelated at the level of the brain is not at all intuitive, and, had, and there's a lot known about it. And 
what we're being asked to consider is that you damage one part of the brain and the mind, something about the mind and, and, and subjectivity is lost. You damage another and, and, and yet more is lost. And yet if you damage the whole thing at death, we can rise off the brain with all our faculties intact, recognizing grandma and speaking English. Now, right. so, like, yeah, it brings us up thoughts. But that there, was nice. But there is something to be said, just to play, I guess, devil's advocate or whatever. Isn't it, what was it, every eight years, every cell in your body is changed or regenerated in a different form? Yeah, you're right? a completely new person every seven, I think. Seven, yeah, seven or eight yeah. years. No, you can that, see it in kids. Yeah, yeah. it's does now what happens with thoughts and, and things like memory? Are they are they then transferred over to the newer cells, or are cells you know, or not cells, but are, is memory stored elsewhere? Like what some people like to say, you know what I mean? Like where where, where when does when and where does that transfer happen? And if it does at all, where are memories stored? Because people really don't know where memories are stored. So he, is he saying is it the ether? You know is, what I mean? Is he saying that your consciousness? leaves and gets transferred to something else when what, you die or what he, what he was saying is that the brain that. is as simple as just a circuit board and if yeah. things break they break just like anything else i think he was removing uh the separation people like to do between uh mind uh mind and body yeah or soul and body well it's a cool it's a cool idea because the idea there is like what's the imprint then like it, once it's here once the idea of a person is here and there's a ripple effect from that um is that not permanent because you've made your contribution to 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 everybody you've like you've joined in on the conversation the ideas that you have come up with based on other people have like have become real and then other people are gonna like base ideas off off you know your ideas (laughs) you're in the chain of events Mm -hmm. right um so like I think like when when you start worrying about like am I am I a soul am I or am I just like a meat machine <laughs> um the worry is that you won't won't have any importance right yeah like that you're just there's nothing special about you and there's like a fear that it's limited fear right? fear is I think is a, it's a fundamental driving force in human beings People fear the unknown. They fear death. And I think that's why things like religion are so comforting because they give you an escape from that fear. They let you know there, there's another side. There and is they, a safety. And that you're permanent. And that you're, yeah, you will be. Like in, <clears throat> let's say, in, in, in some, like say, Christian religions or Judeo Christian religions, they, they believe in, some people believe that you're going to heaven. Some people believe, like Jehovah's Witnesses, for example, believe that earth is remade anew and there'll be the new kingdom, as they call it, and people will live with animals and. The lion will be as tame as the sheep, I believe, as the uh, scripture says. And, you know, there is, there is no death. Satan will be bound by chains in a pit for, I think it's 1,000 years, and then he's released again to test humanity all over again. And then if you fall, if humans fall again, then God will wipe us out. <laughs> like, it's, it's a very terrifying and strange thing. Yeah. In the book of Revelation. Yeah. It's a very Revelation. Yeah. It's silly. It's, it's <laughs> it, it, it is. I'm just, I'm like, just laying it out. I, it's, a, it's an easy answer. Like, right. cause I, I just struggle. I struggle with it for a while because yeah. you try to find meaning we and you're did. like, if I'm temporary and this isn't forever, what's it matter if I do anything? And the thing that like the, the answer I arrived to was that I'm a piece of all of it. Mm-hmm. You know, even though it's temporary, what I am is the whole thing. That that's what I actually am. I'm looking at it from like this little peephole, you know, mm-hmm. from a very small little like viewfinder into like this this universe. But there's no line. If I'm, you know, the the reality is I am just a meat machine. You know, there isn't some innate separate part of me. I'm connected to all of it. I'm ex- I'm an extension of all of it, and and I have extensions of all of it through me. Like think of all the cells in my body that are, live autonomously. Like think about the skin cells that, that behave, that, that the have flora. their own, yeah, the flora, the bacteria, uh, every, almost every part of me is a separate living thing that all thinks they're probably their own thing. And I'm not anything except the collection of all of them together. And somehow when you get them all together and they're all working, that makes me think that I'm separate from all of it when at the whole time I was it 
I was it. It's like it's like a bubble on the ocean. And when the bubble bursts, that bubble is gone forever. But it becomes the ocean. It just becomes it merges back into that. And it'll pop up other bubbles. And and each bubble kind of thinks it's temporary and thinks important. it's important. It thinks it it's important. Thinks it, it matters. And it does and it doesn't. And each bubble is part of the whole thing. Each bubble is the ocean. Do you do you feel that's that's a bit of an ego thing by people to want to be special to want to be the bubble that matters the most in the river that is the universe yeah because in reality it really doesn't fucking matter you're still a part of it. like it's, we are it's, fucking aggregate yeah you yeah. think that's what it is the human like, race yeah. like the ego yeah taking charge and kind of like being do you think it's important though afraid do you think without that ego though we wouldn't have things like fucking skyscrapers and yeah. vaccines like, yeah, yeah that yeah. ego has driven us to I great think, things i think that's the fuel well, we're, we're so important we're better a, than bacteria there's a case that for that there, i mean well but, here here's the thing What's the alternative? So no. if if you didn't have a bunch of beings that all thought that they were separate, then you'd have a bunch of beings that all knew they were the same thing, which if they knew they were the same thing, they would also know that they were God. They they would know they were fully autonomous and in charge the of everything. Of and they one. would, they, yeah, yeah, the idea, oneness. they would realize that they're one. There would be no challenge because you could do anything you wanted forever, instantly, irrespective of time and space, yeah. like as long as you want. And that's like the cheat code for everything forever. And there's no fun in that. There's no challenge. It's like having the cheat code to the video game or skipping ahead to the end. Yeah. The challenge is playing it, you know? <laughs> so that's what seems to be the thing that we're doing. We're, you, um, you need to think it's temporary. You need to think the video game's real. You need to think that like here's the limitations and if you don't if you if you jump over that cliff one more time you'll die and you'll go to the beginning. You need the fear or else it's not fun. You need the rules to the game. And nice. I think the reality is that we are a piece of that ultimate power but we're tricking ourselves into thinking we're not. That's even we just described it is even uh, biblical in certain ways because the story of I mean you remember most of like why God made humans according to like fucking. The no, Bible could you anyway? tell me? Yeah. I, I yeah, did. No. I, but I would I love to hear the story. What I, what I, what I tried so hard when I was little so, to uh, avoid religion. And I would and I would love for anyone uh, to either correct me if I'm wrong or to reinforce me if I'm right. But if I remember correctly, humans were made like in the like I believe it's in Genesis it says humans are above angels, like like rank wise uh -huh. when, it when it comes to God because they have free will. So what it's like when you say something like that, it seems like now I'm projecting on what the Bible might be saying, but it seems like God was bored. It seems like he had this innate like I have an army of things I'll do whatever the fuck I want. Let's 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 mix it up. Let's let's get something I could say no to me. Right. And that's basically what you just described. A, yeah. a being that had its all power. Let's make some rules. Let's 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 play on hard mode. Let's play on hardcore yeah. mode. That's, that's what it's like, like. Same thing. Right? Why else would a god or god make fucking humans the most annoying thing? Fucking <laughs> like. Yeah, but but the thing is, I'm not saying there is the one. Humans, but, like somewhere yeah. along the line, there was that disconnect between God and the humans. Whereas the humans are just an extension of God all along, or a way for God to play, or a way for God to pretend. And by that, God, that I think he's not. Infin infinite. Yeah, we're you not, know? and I don't even think you're necessarily talking about like one omnipotent being. No, but the, you could call the universe God if you want. Well, of course, uh, is what I'm saying. I think People we're. Think I think as a society, we're just caught up on vocabulary. Yeah, I think everybody's actually talking about the same thing, just in different and ways. We're all caught up on like how to say it. Right. Me and my girlfriend have that problem. It's so all silly. The time. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, I'm not I'm, saying I'm you're saying, a bitch. I'm saying <laughs> you're <laughs> acting like a bitch. Is no. like, you're not a bitch. No. <laughs> no, we we constantly say the same fucking thing in a different way, and we think we're disagreeing. Do with you guys each other. and you fight about it? Yeah, it's like, oh, that's fucking green. Oh, I think that's chartreuse. Oh, they're both green. <laughs> <laughs> they're both versions of green. Okay, let's fucking move on with our day. <laughs> I've never heard of that word. Before. Do you realize how sweet it's gonna be when we can just mind to mind interface? Uh, like we won't fighting. have no, nice. we'll have no confusions over mm. like what we mean. Can't our intent will be Halo? very clear. What? Can't you do that in Halo? I don't know. Don't you guys do that what? online or whatever? Halo. They, yeah, don't people play like online and like with the headsets mind so they're mind? all in is each other's what, is heads? Is that what you're, oh, okay, I see what you're Yeah, saying. but they still have to talk. Yeah. What I'm talking oh. about is a USB imagine, port to my brain. Imagine the step past vocabulary. Okay. 
You know, um, there was a point before we had words where we communicated communicated to each other through grunts, kind of like animals. You know, we right. animals bark and, at each other and body language. It's not like yeah, just sounds and body language and just kind of like, it's very vague. But try to explain to those like pre-humans that grunted how much of a change language would have on how they interacted with yeah. each other and the whole culture. It would be such an extreme change like trying to explain Shakespeare to to a, an animal that just grunts they to me they couldn't understand that right <laughs> language is just slow telekinesis yeah now imagine slow. yeah because what you're or doing tele- is oh, you're, sorry, telepic. you're bottling your thoughts yeah. or your experience at this time and you're trying to package it into these w- sounds the best way you can <laughs> push it through the air goes into the other person's brain they associate those sounds to the the references that they have in Feelings, their brain, rhythm, and pitch. then they you basically get an understanding of what this person is trying to express themselves yeah. to you. Now, imagine the next step when you don't have to, none of that. You don't need just, that. It's just a direct, you know, port to port yeah. Wi-Fi, no words. You know, like it's it's hard to think. What will that be? Will, will just, you see visions? Will it, it be a sound? Be, will I have a memory of your memory? I think it'd just be a transfer of feelings. You know exactly what's just, going on. I think it's the best. We won't need mouths anymore. Well, I mean, I feel like at that point, like who we think we are, the ego will just disappear, mm. and it's almost like in all the cells working together to become the greater that will like merge into this super mind because we'll all have the intelligence of each other. We'll all be able to experience life through each other yeah, there, there at no the same be time. Smart person. Right. No, you would have all that information. Oh, I can't wait for that. You just, you know, <laughs> well, here's the thing. Do you want to do that? Would you <sighs> give in to the the Borg? Would you give in to the the hive mind and become part of the super being? That's getting or crazier. Or would you want to hold on to Alec? You've totally just changed like the tone of what you said. I thought it was so beautiful, everything you were just saying. Now you just made it into a Borg reference. Now I'm scared oh. to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where I, yeah, that's where you it's scary. You just changed the tone. I, because I, I like the idea of the oneness. I think we all I think affect it's each other it's and everything crazier. affects everything else, you know? I think, I think that's what we're doing anyway. Like, whether or not, you know, you choose to give over to it, We've always been the same thing anyway, so why don't we start acting like it? It's a constant. Progression. That's kind of how I, right. I see it. So, but the uh, you know the Borg, like you know what I'm talking about from Star Trek, yeah. right? It's the same idea, but they por- they portray it so badly. Right. If you really look at the Borg and you're like, wait, so everybody has the power of everybody. I've never seen this before. It's Star Trek. Okay. Star Trek. Yeah, I never. But they, they there's like the bad guy. Or the, uh, one of the really bad guys, bad characters, is this collective of beings that are all like hive minded. And nice. there's no individual, but they all have the intelligence of all of them. They all have the power and capability of all of them. If one of them dies off, they all kind of survive. They are all, all of one. them. Right. Okay. They're all one. But, but they portray in, it so yeah, bad. They portray like, it as. That's ugly. funny how they portray it badly. It's though, actually you know I mean? not. That progression bad right. yeah like the idea that i could be everywhere and nowhere at the same time How dare the idea they that feelings. i could have any experience infinitely however i want and swim through consciousness just like openly and in many directions but you know what in the star trek they, they do portray it in the way that you're saying like would you want that and that's how they they treat the borg like you know some some of the star trek characters have been oh, assimilated yeah. into it well, but yeah. you know they didn't want they to be act, assimilated into they do, it. They act like it's a drug. They act right. like like it's seductive. Right. You know, like, you, do you remember the movie that they did with them? Right. That, like, yeah. it, it was, like, hard to resist. Right. Do you, you know? Do you think people, there might be a reach here, do you think this is, like, why certain people who do, like, ayahuasca and shit like that all s- seem to have, like, that similar trip? And What's then, ayahuasca? Is that the uh, the stuff from the cactus? Uh, that's the stuff from the Amazon. Yeah, cactus is uh, it's peyote. A, it's DMT. It's the main chemical. Oh, okay. Dimethyl tryptamine or something. Dimethyl tryptamine. There's a Netflix yeah. thing on my queue. I'm, I'm, I need to watch with that. You see, you see all these people? They all Do have it. like a very similar experience, and they all come out very. Pe- some of them. There's anyway. some weird things that all this, seem to happen. They all have like this very similar trip, mm-hmm. and they're all connected afterward. Or they all seem peaceful with each other. Right? You know, what, it's funny about this I because that is the re- you know the main reason I love this is. Uh, you know, the person that got me into soccer is my uh, my brother in law. Well, mm-hmm. I call him my brother in law because we're never getting married. Right, but right. my girl's brother. He's you guys would absolutely love him. He's the one who who had me 
do mushrooms Dude, for the first time. We he's, should have this guy in the but he has like you guys have like a very <laughs> similar outlooks on things. And I got to tell you right now, like if you, if I were able to bring him in here, he's the, he's the reason I can't do that Saturday thing. Maybe I'll try and get him to come be to, on the show. See if he'll come. <laughs> bring him in. Yeah. We'll have him in the doctor. But yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's that kind of a concept. He's he's opened my eyes to to so many things and so many ways of thought. Him and my girlfriend just about being one and 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 being a part of something bigger than yourself and you know respect and and things of that nature but it's just so funny that you share the same kind of thing and you're talking about like doing the those kind of drugs and then and everyone, then we call the show you're, you're on, like, on mushrooms you guys are like on the <laughs> same level and it's funny Strange. because like a lot of the things you've talked about you you talk about I've already heard from him just in different it's ways like, Pretty, cl- pretty so, close, like actually. That, pretty close. Just like you, you've come, you both <coughs> come to this realization, and you guys have never been in the same room, nor no. maybe the same. No, you know. Yeah, is that area is that time. an intelligence? Is there an intelligence to these plants that? Yeah, there's it's their an inherent, of thought. They, inherent they, thing they, that you're getting, or the, it, does it program your brain a certain way? You know, or to just be a, more connected, just, or just connect you to a certain part of your brain that you just yeah disconnected yeah, I mean, from, exactly. from birth or something. I mean. Well, I mean, has he ever talked to you about the uh, Terrence McKenna's theory? Yeah, <laughs> on, that is. He on, gave me all the books and all the the audio and shit. Like y- me and you my listen girl listened to him. To him. I, I'm I haven't started it yet, but like, it's pretty powerful. Yeah, my girlfriend then, listened to them. He's he's recommended me to listen to them uh, many times. So the Stone Date like, Theory. That. That's a yeah. That's um, and then and then John Marco Allegro's The Sacred Mushroom on the Cross. Well, explain, yeah, which explain the Stone Date Theory to people. Stone Ape Theory? Yes, people might not know what that is. So, Stone Ape Theory is the idea that, that, uh, while, you know, long time ago, what, like 30,000 years ago, Mm -hmm. when humans were like developing, the rainforests were receding and, and the monkeys that we used to live like in rainforests and trees, we had to start. Humanoid type things. Yeah, humanoids. We started walking on the plains, right? And there wasn't, this is when we started became, becoming more carnivorous. Mm hmm. So we would follow herds of buffalo eating whatever was in the plane, right? And all through Africa and still to this day on all like cow shit and like buffalo shit, the Amanita muscaria mushrooms, yeah. which are super psychoactive, grow Psil- psilocybin. like crazy. Psilocybin. psilocybin. Mean, right? Yeah, psilocybin. Yeah, cool. um, so, you know, we were just kind of scavengers at the point. We were eating everything that we could. Yeah. You know, you imagine if you have just, you know, entire cultures of humans dousing themselves with five grams of mushrooms daily, that doing that over and over and over, eventually one of those monkeys is going to be like, holy fuck, I'm a monkey. And this and, is the and, same and, and that's the just, birth. And this and is same yeah. Thing. And People, that I've heard this the yeah. same thing, and and it and, was amazing and to me because that is a paradigm shifting idea. Yeah, if you right. look at a and dog, the, and this is that dog's not thinking that it's a dog. The dog's not thinking it has an asshole and oh man, I wonder how people perceive me and like the dog is just being dog. It doesn't have to think about it. If if you get to that point when you're like holy fuck, I am something. I am some some I'm this is it's like a whole perception shift Mm -hmm. that you realize you're separate and it comes with a whole new world of problems realizing you're temporary realizing you're separate from the rest of the universe freaking yourself out you're contemplating what the fuck this is which nothing else questions except for humans like why does this even exist like why is there something at all well i mean it would be a lot easier for there to be nothing i mean do you ever like sit there and actually think about like holy fuck! Why? Like why? Anything? Well, not yet. Like what? It goes back to what we were saying before. I mean, that's, why people, that's why people like fear. Ugh. But people need the fear. And I mean, it's, it's a scary thing to just to think about what we actually are. And this stone age <laughs> theory, so people know, is it's, it's actually kind of plausible because there was a doubling of the mind of humans within yeah. like two thousand or twenty thousand years or two thousand years. Like it doubled in size, and that's never happened with any other species in that well, short amount of time. It wasn't long. There's so, a significant shift. Like a, a jump. Do you think we're due for another expansion? <laughs> oh, dude, why? I think oh. we're, technology's doing that. What, I mean, what is your cell phone? What is what is uh, what what is uh, th- what we're doing right now? We're we're expressing our thoughts and minds through a uh, a web of interconnected beings, infinitely, like throughout time. Speaking of which, dude, did you see Silva's new video? No. 
being human is to be transhuman. Oh yeah, we watched that together. Yeah, we did. Did you see this, Am- Angela? No, who's that by? Uh, Jason Silva. Yeah, the, the main theory Jason in that Silva. was he's calling humans transhumans, which means self-evolving. He's, just, he's basically saying humans are the only species that self-evolve. They, I mean, and now with technology, it's it's forced. What does that mean, self-evolve? Constantly changing where they're at mentally, like paradigm thinking, like all that, constantly changing it mm-hmm. to be better. No other, I mean, look at no other animal does that. Gotcha. Within within just like a hundred years, humans can go from like a horse to fucking spaceships in a hundred years. It's the only only species that will self evolve, and the internet is just an expansion of that. Right, which is pretty great. I think that's what you're trying to say. Yeah. And what's this guy's name? Jason Silva. Jason Silva. Jason Silva. He puts out videos on shit like this all the time. One He's, of the things, uh, just talking about the monkeys and the the mushrooms one of the things i was listening to i found intriguing was uh the uh the advent of alcohol there was some story <laughs> yeah. did you hear that i don't know if I, I i probably won't tell this right but uh with the mushrooms um wanting to keep the mushrooms longer to putting them in honey and right. then they fermented and then in the mead all of a sudden a mead and now we have alcohol and, and now we have what's fucking us up yeah, <laughs> and there were so, yeah. And so it, the and preservation of what we wanted we got ended com- up killing us. Some, somewhere <laughs> along the line, we got confused. Yeah, and we forgot what we were preserving was the mushrooms because there was alcohol in it as well. And people started just getting used to the alcohol Isn't part. That beautiful though. And then you lose track of where it started. Yeah. But the started alcohol doesn't mushrooms. give you the same kind of connection. No, it no. does a different thing. I like yeah. that though. That's a bounce. I think alcohol does something. We had this amazing thing and then this bad thing. Came I don't I just I don't find so many good things in alcohol at all. Just I don't think humans as a race know how to to use it it's properly. You know. Alcohol um man. Although I have tends to fuck shit up. Yeah. Like I mean, I all almost all the biggest mistakes I've ever made in my life. I was drinking alcohol. Yeah, I mean it's just it's just a fact, and I I think a lot of people. Um, oh it's shit! Like the mushrooms Jesse's tap here. you into that great part of your mind, yeah. and the the alcohol taps you into the shit that makes you do the worst yeah. shit in your life. I'll be right back. We got a guest. Watch this video. <laughs> this episode was proudly made possible by Subaru. So there's a great line by Shakespeare in which he says, we know what we are, we know not what we may be. And in the age of accelerating technologies in which we extend the cognitive reach of our minds, the perimeters of our humanness with these extensions of self, these exoskeletons, these technological scaffoldings, you know, the wings of our aircrafts and the signals traveling through our smartphones, sending our thoughts electrified at the speed of light across oceans of sky. We redefine and extend what it means to be human. Edward O. Wilson says, we have actually decommissioned natural selection and now we must look deep within ourselves and decide what we wish to become. We are now the chief agents of evolution. We have reversed engineered the software of biology and about to rewire and upgrade and redefine what it is to be a homo sapien. Juan Enriquez uses the term homo evolutus, the being that evolves itself, that transforms itself, right? Ray Kurzweil, we didn't stay in the caves. We haven't stayed on the planet. Biology, just another membrane to be transcended. You know, Marvin Minsky used to say, will robots inherit the earth? Yes, they will, but they will be our children. You know, I love this idea because we hear the term transhumanism, and what it means to be human is to be transhuman. We are the species that transforms and transcends. We never stop, we always did, it's what we are. Be sure to check out Second Chance Subaru at revision3.com slash Subaru.